In the previous video, we have finished implementing the repair map method, which repairs our map so there is always a path between our two points, the start point and the end point. So now we should prepare our candidate map to return the data regarding the path and we will try visualizing our path and our obstacles using the prefabs that we have imported from uh, Kenny Assets. So let's start from stopping the game. First thing we need to do is to go to candidate map class. OK. And let's delete the debug.log for our path. Now, next thing we need to do is to go where we are returning the map data. Let's left click on it and go to definition. And beside those parameters, those variables, we will want to pass the public list of vector threes, which will be our path. Let's go back to our candidate map. We can click this arrow here. And in this return statement, we will return also the path equals this dot path. OK, so now we are returning our data together with our path that the Aster algorithm has found. Now let's open up the map generator. OK, and we are here in the map generator class. What we will want to have here is a public pool uh, visualize using prefabs. And let's set it to false by default. And we'll want to have a public wall auto repair. And let's set it to be true by default. OK, let's slide it down. And in the generate map, we are passing false to visualize map because we are passing visualize using prefabs. Now we can pass instead of false our parameter visualize using prefabs. That's great. And in create map, we we'll by definition by default return false to auto repair. Instead of this, we want to pass auto repair. And we are ready now to implement our our visualization using the prefabs. So we have we are auto repairing the map. Let's go to this visualize map, left click, go to definition. And we have already prepared this uh, field here to implement our visualize using prefabs. So let's create this method. Basically, we will pass the same thing, the same data that we are passing to uh, visualize using primitives. Let's alt enter and generate this method. Great. And now, before we do every, anything else, we need to have the prefabs that we want to pass to our method that we want to instantiate. So let's create a couple of fields of type public game object. And the first one will be our road straight. OK, next we can uh, create road tile corner. Because we currently will have only corner and straight uh, sections. We also need tile empty. Uh, start tile. And exit tile. OK. And we also will have public game object array that will contain environmental tiles. And we will also have public game object array environment tiles. So those will be all the props that we generate in places of the obstacles. And for the road, we are going to provide uh, the one uh, type of uh, prefab and we are going to rotate it accordingly. But for now, let's try visualizing our map without the rotation of our road tiles. OK, so we have our game objects. Now we need to implement our visualize using prefabs. So let's scroll down into this newly created method. 
and first thing we will want to do is to loop for i equals zero i less than data dot path dot count and we are going to say var position equals data dot path dot i and now if position is different than data dot exit position because recall we have exit position in our path uh, so we know where we want to go but we don't want to place a prefab of type road in the position of the exit uh, point because we have special prefab for this so for any other road cell we are going to set grid dot set cell position dot x position dot c and cell object type dot road and we have i have misspelled it so control r r and let's change it to road great so now we have placed our road uh, elements on the grid and now uh, basically this we could have uh, in another method not necessarily in the visualize prefab method we could have passed the grid we've already placed data on it so this is one thing that we can refactor later but for now let's create another for loop so now we will loop through columns of our grid so grid dot width and for row in our grid dot length great and what we will do here is first get the cell so var cell equals grid get cell and we are going to pass the column and row okay so now we have access to the cell of our grid and then we are going to say var position equals cell uh, sorry uh, new vector 3 cell dot x zero and cell dot z so we have our position and access to our cell so our data actually the cell contains x and z it could have contained the position itself we wouldn't have to create a vector 3 here our index now equals grid dot calculate index from coordinates let's pass position dot x and position dot z okay now we have our index and so we need to check if our data dot obstacles array uh, in this index is equals to true so basically we do not uh, write anything else l and we say cell is taken equals false so if this cell on our grid is not taken but the data suggests it should be an obstacle we will say cell dot object type equals cell object type dot obstacle so we preset this cell to be an obstacle and then basically what we can do is call switch uh, tab tab and now we can pass cell dot object type and arrow down it will create for us all the cases that we can have so for now we will simply instantiate a type of the cell that we want to have for this we will have a method called create indicator but it will be not the same method we will pass to it position and we will pass to it uh, the prefab so for us this will be tile empty for the empty uh, type of object alt enter generate method and we have this method here let's implement it so again we will here create a var element equals uh, instantiate our uh, instead of tile empty let's call it prefab our prefab and for the position we again need to add 0.5 to both coordinates so let's create var our position uh, to uh, placement position 
equals position plus new vector 3 point 0.5 point 0.5 and point 0.5 of course we need to add f to it all the rate and in the instantiation we will pass our placement position to place it correctly on our map and we will have a rotation so let's create a parameter quaternion rotation equals new quaternion okay so this will allow us to give a default rotation here but if we need to we can pass to it a specific rotation that we want to set and now we want to set element.transform.parent to be the parent of this game object to create all the elements under this map vis visualizer game object to not crowd our hierarchy and what else do we need and last step is to add our element to our dictionary so dictionary of obstacles add our position that original position and our element so we do not want to add it as the placement position but the original position and basically that's it it doesn't really matter for our dictionary because currently we are only clearing it but if you would like not to clear the map but instead just delete the obstacles uh, that you want to delete and leave all the rest to not re regenerate all the map you could delete the concrete uh, element from our dictionary okay so we have a way to uh, create our indicator using the prefab let's go back to our visualize using prefab method and what else do we need for now let's create indicator for the road for the position and let's say road straight without any corners without any rotation we will tackle how to rotate our road and place correct road prefab so corner or straight road and the correct rotation in the next video for now let's copy this and we can paste it into our start using start prefab i think we had a uh, start style yes and for exit we are going to place exit tile great and for the obstacle as you might recall this is an array so int random index we can call random dot range and we need to say using random equals unity engine dot random let's slide back down and we can say random range zero up to our environment tiles dot length and we will say create indicator that we have copied and pasted here and we are going to say environment tiles random index so we will choose a random uh, prefab from our environment tiles and we will place it on on our map so basically that's it now this is called inside our visualize map and if we go here and find all references and find this we can see that uh, we are passing it uh, the visualize using prefabs in the generate new map and we have another call here in the vis um, vis map visualizer visualize map so basically we want instead of false pass again visualize using prefab not to forget about that generate and basically this should be it so let's go back to unity okay and we have our map visualizer it should have empty fields for the prefabs so let's go to our models road and we have our uh, end round it will be for the exit tile our road straight so tile straight will be for road straight a uh, corner round will be for road tile corner a uh, tile empty i think it is this one yes it is so map visualizer simple tile for tile empty uh, for the start tile we will have the tile spawn and i believe i have made a mistake because uh, tile end is the empty tile but what we need is to create our uh, tower 
So what we want here is to create a, a tile end and we'll add to it. So let's create a new empty game object. Let's reset its position and let's say castle. And we will add to it our tile end round. And we are going to add to it our model tower. Okay, let's see how it looks. Click F to focus on it. Okay, and we can go a little bit higher. Great. And we can save it as a prefab in our prefabs. Okay, and now we can delete it from the hierarchy and place it in our visualizer as the end tile. Great, so now we have this and we need our environment tiles. So let's go back to our models road and we have our tree. We can add it here. We have our tree double. We can add it here. Tree quad and tile hill. And I believe, yeah, that's it. Tile rock. So we have a lot of those uh, prefabs for the props of our, on our environment. Let's save it all. Let's try running it. Okay, and let's see the map generator. Visualize using prefabs. Let's generate map. And you can see we have our map. Although the road cells are not rotated correctly, but we have our start point, our end point, and that's good. And we have our road. Let's change the setup, setup to have start at the up edge and exit at down edge. Okay, great. Generate. And we can see that we have created a road. So last thing we need is to rotate our road correctly and place corners when there are corners on our path. So that's what we are going to tackle in the next video.